Shackleton the Explorer. So I'm going to talk all about this video. I'm exclusively talking about a paper that just came out. It was published online for February 3rd, 2021. And it's titled Glacial Episodes of a Freshwater Arctic Ocean Covered by a Thick Ice Shelf. So this is actually quite a fascinating paper. There were periods uh, twice in the last 150,000 years. The ice sheets were so thick and they extended so far out from land that they went right near the uh, North Pole. In fact, they covered almost the entire Arctic Ocean. Not talking about sea ice that is formed from freezing ocean water at the surface. I'm talking about glaciers on land that grew so massive and so big that they extended far out into the ocean forming ice shelves. And these ice shelves kept expanding until they covered essentially the entire Arctic Ocean. And they were up to uh, a kilometer thick. So 90% of them, or 900 meters, was underwater. 100 meters would be above water. And when you combine that 900 meters underwater with a sea level um, being lower by about 130 meters, we've got a kilometer. Th these, uh, this ice from the ice shelves extended downwards into the ocean um, a kilometer and you know, a kilometer below present day sea level and caused scarring on the bottom. So we can actually see these scars on the bottom and we thought they were originally due to calved ice off the, sh off, the, um, of, off the glaciers, but it looks like the ice shelves themselves extended far, far out and covered the Arctic Ocean and did the scarring all over on the ridges, etc., cetera, um, down to about a kilometer depth. From the sediment measurements of thorium-230, now, Uranium salts are in seawater. So, so when you have a salty ocean, you have these dissolved uranium salts, and the uranium decomposes into thorium-230, radioactive decomposition. And that thorium-230 settles into the sediments. And when there's no salt water, when it's just fresh water in the water column above, the thorium-230 is essentially zero. Calcium levels and sulfur and other things like that are also in the salts and they're very very low and that indicates we basically had fresh water in those uh, basins. Okay so that's basically what the paper is showing. That's the evidence. This is all new stuff but this explains how we could get huge freshwater discharges into the uh, North Atlantic that can cause abrupt climate changes. Okay, so the thick layer of ice. So the observation of specific erosional features as deep as a thousand meters below the current sea level confirmed the presence of a thick layer of ice on the Lomonosov Ridge in the Central Arctic Ocean and elsewhere. Okay, so basically um, there were two episodes. So there's evidence provided of two episodes during which the Arctic Ocean and the adjacent Nordic seas were not only covered by an extensive ice shelf, but also filled entirely with fresh water, causing a widespread absence of thorium-230 in marine sediments. These two freshwater intervals occurred 70 to 62,000 years before present and 150,000 to 131,000 years before present, corresponding to portions of marine isotope stages four and six. Okay, so about 9 million cubic kilometers of fresh water is required to explain this interpretation. Um, a fresh water mass of this size stored in oceans rather than land suggests that a revision of sea level reconstruction uh, needs to be done. Okay, and also large masses of fresh water could be delivered to the North Atlantic Ocean on very short time scales. Okay, so... Basically, there's salts in the ocean. That includes uranium salts that's naturally occurring, dissolved uranium in the seawater. 
the uranium content in the seawater is proportional to the salinity. Okay, now the uranium decomposes into 230 thorium and that's deposited down through the water column into, and goes into the sediments that build up at that particular time. So you can determine the amount of overlying sea salt in the water column from looking, measuring the thorium-230 in the seafloor sediments. Okay, so a 1,000 meter thick ice shelf over a seafloor of 2,000 meter depth, that would reduce the available 230 thorium by half. If the water underlying the ice shelf has a reduced salinity or is fresh, this would further reduce the 230 thorium. So that would be reduced to zero if it's all fresh water all the way down. So this is the key diagram. So this is the, this is the Arctic. There's Greenland, the Canadian Archipelago, the Bering Strait, okay, and the Atlantic side here, Scandinavian countries. The reds are the reds up to the gray. This is all water that's presently the water depth, the present water depth. Okay, so so less than a thousand, up to, down to a thousand meters, everything com is choked off. Okay, so if everything is choked off, we just have the the blues here. So this is what the Arctic Ocean basin looked like. This was all land over here, above sea level, and over here. There were, there were ice shelves going down and blo blo choking off these channels, okay, from the Greenland to Scotland Ridge along this way. So the water was confined in here. There were only small passages deep down connecting to the Atlantic Ocean. So the water, 1,200 cubic kilometers per year, entered this basin from glacial melt plus rivers flowing in, etc. cetera. And uh, that water could only exit through these small passages deep down here, so it kept the salt water from intruding in. And over time, you know, thousands, years, whatever, this whole basin became completely fresh water. Now these are, I, there's various cores in the sediments taken all around these particular regions. So, so for example, up here, this core sediment here, if you look in the lay, go through the sediment, you see the thorium-230 this is disintegrations per minute per gram of sediment, and you can see it dropping to zero in this region and this region. So these are the two time periods where we had fresh water completely under the ice shelf, completely fresh water Arctic Ocean. And you can look at the different sediments at different, that are taken at different water depths. So this is fresh water down to 2,700 meters. Okay, fresh water here in these regions these regions. So there's cores taken all over. So you can see the extent. Now the sedimentation rate is different. So the thickness of these particular things varies. Okay, but if you go all over the Arctic Ocean and all over, you know, this region here, south of Svalbard, um, you can see the uh, signature of these of thorium going to zero and therefore fresh water in the water column above. This is amazing and fascinating stuff. Now the intervals seem to be smaller as you come down here. So this was not fresh water all the way down to the bottom for as long in those regions. So this region would have been choked off and become fresh water first, followed by this region. And then as, the, um, as warming occurred and the, the sea ice, uh, the, the uh, ice shells disintegrated, it opened up the passageway to the Atlantic first and water could start coming in as sea level rose and, and these pathways were reconnected to the Pacific, then salt water could intrude and we got back to the oceans that we have today. So this is, this is quite fascinating and amazing stuff. Um, also, we can look at not just, um, so this is, a, this is a different, a core PS72, which is, a, which is this core up here. So, so this is repeated over here, but they also look at the uranium 238 uranium and uh, the, the, the uranium isotope ratios. The calcium goes down. So when the thorium goes to zero and it's fresh water in the column all above, the calcium also drops, which is, which is an ingredient of sea salt. Also the um, manganese uh, drops here, which is also an ingredient of sea salt and also sulfur drops. So all of these things combined, plus the scrapes on the ocean floor, mean that it's completely fresh water 
underneath. And also the plankton, the planktonic foraminifera uh, drops by a factor of four. Um, there's a lot less of it in fresh water. Um, and it's mostly sand deposited. So these are the layers here uh, in the sediment. You know, they're this, this uh, distinctive color, different from a lot of the background. Um, and so this is a picture. This shows that there's low thorium in those time period is fresh water in the water column. And they looked for possible other explanations. And the only thing that made sense is that there was fresh water, that, that the reduction of thorium-230 at most sites in these intervals, these two intervals, but it's almost complete absence. It was completely absent even below 2,500 meter water depth. So the water mass underlying the ice shelf was fresh, not saline, at least to this depth of 2,500 meters. Okay, this view is supported not just by thorium-230, but also by the virtual absence of calcium carbonate, low values of sulfur, low values of manganese, all these things that are in sea salt in typical sediments. Also, there was an absence or reduction of cosmogenic beryllium-10 for these intervals. So this means that the sea, the, the um, ice shelf, you know, the ice shelf cap on the Arctic Ocean was permanent, was there year round because cosmogenic beryllium is cosmogenic. So the genesis, it's the, the source of beryllium is from the atmosphere, but there's no connection to the atmosphere to the water. So the beryllium 10 level has dropped in those particular regions. Okay, and then you can look at some of the numbers. You know, assuming the Arctic Ocean receives the precipitation from 12 million square kilometers of land and ocean surface in glacial periods, if you take a conservative 100 millimeters per year precipitation, you calculate a freshwater discharge, including ice of 1,200 cubic kilometers per year into the Arctic Ocean at glacial steady state and it would be several times higher during periods of advancing or collapsing glaciers. The Amazon has an annual discharge of about 6,500 cubic kilometers per year. So this number here is about, uh, you know, it's just under 20% of the Amazon flow. That's the amount of fresh water going into the Arctic Ocean Basin. And um, so that would freshen up the whole region. You know, if you take the volume of the Arctic Ocean under the shelf life of nine and a half uh, million cubic kilometers and you know if you add an additional 2.8 million cubic kilometers from the volume on, of the Norwegian Sea, Greenland Sea and Iceland Sea, if this whole thing was fully fresh, this 12.3 uh, um, million cubic kilometers and we get 1200 cubic kilometers per year going in, it would take 8,000 years to completely freshen. But don't forget these are ballpark numbers so if the flow rate in is a bit higher then you know we're talking a few thousands of years, so it all it all makes sense, okay? Um, it makes sense. So the implica huge implications of this finding, right? Because um, you know, if you look at all this evidence, we conclude that the Arctic wide occurrence of thick shelf ice in peak glacials could repeatedly lead to a blockage, uh, you know, of the um, Greenland Scotland Ridge overflow causing freshening of the entire Arctic Basin and Nordic Sea. Okay, this is a huge freshwater storage, you know, in the ice dammed system, and it could be released on very short time scales into the Atlantic when the ice shelves melt back. Okay, so this is a huge finding, and it, there's also some evidence that. Even around 4,900 years ago, there was fresh water released into the ocean. And what we're seeing is that the, um, the AMOC is slowing down even today because of the release of fresh water from the Arctic. So this study is very important for trying to figure out the connections of the climate system and uh, what, what is likely to happen today when more and more fresh water is released from the Arctic. Although we don't have a present day analog of this because this was a cold glacial world when sea levels were lower and we had a freshwater Arctic. Thank you for listening. Fascinating science. Please consider donating to my website, paulbeckwith.net.
Thank you.